In this video, let's take a look at opposite values together. Now, particularly in this video, we're going to just be focusing on integers, so we're going to leave out fractions and decimals. All right, so for this first section, we're going to go ahead and plot each of these integer points on the number line below. So for number one, we have J, and it's located at positive 7. So if this is 5 over here and this is 10, it's going to go between 5 and 10. Uh, each tick mark looks like it's going to be 1, so I think this 7 is going to be right over here. And let's put a dot and then put the letter J. Uh, for number two, we have K, which is located at negative two. Uh, here is zero, here is negative five. Uh, negative one would be here and negative two would be here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a dot at the second line to the left of zero, and that's where K is gonna be. For number three, we have L, which is negative eight. So let's see, negative eight, here's negative five, here's negative six, here's negative seven, here's negative eight. So it's gonna be a little bigger than negative 10 to the right of it but it's definitely smaller than negative five, so that's gonna be L. If we take a look at number four, that's M. M's located at positive three, so here's zero, here's one, here's two, here's three. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a dot over at three, and that's gonna be M, all right? For number five, N is negative four, so here's negative five. Negative four is gonna to be to the right of it, it's a little bigger, so negative four is one space to the right of negative five. That's gonna be N. And then finally, for number six here, we have O. O is gonna be at positive four, so positive four is, here's five, so four, positive four is just to the left of it, it's a little bit smaller, so here's a dot at four. I'm gonna put the letter O, I'm gonna put it underneath here, so we have a little bit more space. All right, let's take a look at this next section here. Here we are going to be writing the integer value that's gonna be what each point represents. And then we're gonna go ahead and write the opposite of that value. So for number seven, we have A. So let's see, we found A, it's right over here. So what is the integer value here? Well, here's zero, here's negative one, here's negative two. So A is gonna be located at negative two. But then it also says to write its opposite. So what's the opposite of negative two? The opposite of negative two is just going to be positive two, all right? For number eight, we have B. So where's B? B is located over here. This is at negative four. Let's go ahead and write that point is negative four, but then what's the opposite of negative four? Well, the other number that is four away from zero is gonna be positive four. For nine, we have C. So where is C? It's right over here. This is at positive one. So for the point, we're gonna say it's gonna be one. Go ahead and put that in parentheses. But what's the opposite of one? That would just be negative one. So that's gonna be the opposite. For number 10, we have D. So D is located right over here. Looks like D is at positive four. So I'm gonna go ahead and say D is at four. And then what's the opposite of four? The opposite of four should be negative four. For 11, we have E. So here's E over here. Let's see. This is negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. So E is going to be at negative six. And what's the opposite of negative six? The opposite of negative six is going to be positive six. And then for number 12, we have F here. F is located right over here. This is at zero. This is one. This is two. This is three. So F is located at positive three. And then what's the opposite of positive three? That's just gonna be negative three. So for each of these, we went ahead and found the integer value first, and then we went ahead and then found the opposite of each of those integers, and that is the number that is the same distance from zero or equidistant from zero as the original. All right, let's take a look at this next section here. Here we're gonna be going ahead and writing the opposite of each of the integers or values that we are given here. So for number 13, we're given this negative 14 or the opposite of 14, however you wanna think about that. So what is the opposite of this negative 14? Well, the opposite of negative 14 is just gonna be positive 14. That's all we gotta do. For number 14, we have five. Now what's the opposite of five? The opposite of five is going to be negative five. Okay. For number 15, we have the number zero. The opposite of zero is actually just gonna be zero. There's no such thing as positive or negative zero, so just write zero. All right. For number 16, we have this negative negative 12. So in this case, we have 12, right? And then we have the opposite of it. And then we have the opposite of the opposite of 12. So this is really just gonna be the same thing as 12 because the opposite of the opposite is just you know, the regular. And then the 12 is what the same thing as negative negative 12 is, and the opposite of this would be negative 12. 
right? So you can think about this as the opposite of the opposite, and that's just a normal 12. So we can just simplify it that way. And then the opposite of that is negative 12. For number 17, we have the number nine. This one's a little bit more straightforward. The opposite of nine is going to be negative nine. And then for number 18, this one's actually very similar to number 16, but it looks like we have the opposite of the opposite of 24. So we have 24, we have the opposite, then we have the opposite of it. And that's really just going to be 24, All right? So that's the same thing, just with less symbols and negatives. And then what's the opposite of 24? That's gonna be negative 24. So this would be the opposite. All right, for this next section, we're gonna be going ahead and using an inequality. This is a, basically we're gonna use a less than symbol or a greater than symbol to compare each of these uh, given integers. So we're gonna say the left number is less than the right number or the left number is greater than the right number. All right, for number 19, we have negative four and three. Well, negatives are always going to be smaller than positive, so negative four is definitely less than three. Um, for number 20, we have negative seven and negative nine. Now negative seven is to the right on the number line and negative nine is to the left. So negative seven is definitely going to be greater than negative nine. For 21, we have negative seven and negative two. Well, negative seven and negative two, if you look at them on the number line, negative seven is more to the left. So negative seven has to be smaller than negative two. For number 22, we have this negative negative four again, so it thinks it's a good idea to just go ahead and simplify it and say that that's equal to positive four, okay? So if we take a look at that and compare this uh, positive four to negative three, well, positives are always going to be greater than negative, so four is gonna be greater than negative three, or the opposite of the opposite of four is greater than negative three. For 23, we have negative three and zero. Negative three, all negative numbers are gonna be less than zero, so negative three is smaller than zero, is less than it. Okay. For 24, we have negative negative eight. So just like in 22, when we have negative negative four, that's just four. In 24, negative negative eight is just going to be positive eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and write positive eight underneath here. And then eight, a regular eight here is gonna be smaller than a regular 10. So it's less than 10. For 25, we have negative five here. And then over here to the right, we have negative negative three. But hopefully you're getting the hang of that a little bit. And that's really just a three. So here we have a negative number and a positive number, and negative numbers are always going to be smaller than positive numbers. So we can say here that this negative five is smaller than or less than the opposite of the opposite of three, or negative negative three. And for 26, we have the opposite of the opposite of 13, or negative negative 13, and that's really just going to be a regular 13 here. And then if we take a look at this negative negative six, that's the opposite of the opposite of six, and that's really just six. So when we simplify it, then we can just compare 13 and six. 13 is definitely greater than six, so we're gonna say 13 is greater than that six there. And so basically just a couple key things to note here to be extra clear is when you see this negative negative uh, four here, we can just say that negative negative four is really just equal to a regular four, and that's gonna be true for each of these other cases where we have a negative negative. So a negative negative eight is just equal to eight. A negative negative three is equal to just a regular three. A negative negative 13 is just equal to 13. And of course, a negative negative six is really just the same thing as six. Let's take a look at some applications now together. All right, so for 27, two people are going to be scuba diving. One of the divers is gonna be 41 meters below the surface and then the other diver is going to be 39 meters below the surface. It says what integers are going to represent where the divers are with respect to the surface, okay? So we're going to go ahead and make sure that we figure out where these divers are compared to the surface, which is going to be zero. We're going to go ahead and sketch a vertical number line showing their relative locations to the surface, and then we're going to use an inequality to explain how we know which diver is going to be deeper underwater. So I'm actually going to start by drawing the vertical number line first. You can see where things are here. Both divers are underwater, so I'm going to put zero at the top of my number line. And then maybe I'll just jump by tens here. So this is going to be 10 meters underwater. This is going to be negative 20 meters underwater. This is going to be negative 30 meters and then negative 40 meters. I think I can go up to negative 50 meters. Okay, so for diver number one, let's see what that's going to be. I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. So diver number one. One diver is going to be 41 meters below. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and find, where's 41? I think 41 is gonna be right over here, a little smaller than negative 40. So there's diver number one. And then what about diver number two? Diver number two says the other diver is going to be 39 meters below. So negative 39, I'm gonna go ahead and put a dot right above negative 40. So that's gonna be right here, that's negative 39. So here's diver number one, and here's diver number two. So the integer we'll use to represent where diver number one is, is just gonna be negative 41, because they're 41 meters below the surface. And then for diver number two, it's gonna be negative 39. That's the integer that will represent where this diver is. All right, so for an inequality, we can go ahead and basically say that negative 41 is going to be less than negative 39. This is one way that we can go ahead and say this, or we could go ahead and say that negative 39 is going to be greater than negative 41. So we can go ahead and say each of these statements. Now, what do each of these statements mean? For this first one, basically it means that diver number one is going to be deeper than diver number two. That's what this less than symbol means. And for the second inequality, basically when we say negative 39 is greater than negative 41, we're saying diver number two is shallower or closer to the surface than diver number one. Let's check out another one. Here is 28. In 28, we see that Mayan and Darren are both gonna have bank accounts and they are in debt. That means they owe money, right? So Mayan is gonna owe the bank $52 while Darren is gonna owe the money $38. What integers are gonna represent the balance of their bank accounts? We're gonna go ahead and sketch a horizontal number line showing their relative account balances. Then we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing as the last one where we write an inequality and explain how we know which person is in more debt or who owes more money. All right, so here is a number line and here is negative infinity or owing infinite money. And here's positive infinity, which is having infinite money. Looks like they're both in debt, so they're both gonna be in the negative. So I'm gonna go ahead and put zero on my number line over here. And it looks like they're in debt up until 52 bucks. So I'm gonna go by tens here. So here's negative $10. Here's gonna be negative $20, negative 30. and so on. So let's go ahead and see if we can figure out where these people are. Now, we can see that Mayan is going to be uh, owing the bank $52. So that means he's $52 in debt. So we would have to go past negative 50, between negative 50 and negative 60, right? So negative 52 would be somewhere right here. Okay, so just draw a little estimate here. And that represents what Mayan owes. And then for Darren, we can see that he's going to be owing the bank $38. So that's going to be in debt of $38. So let's see, we have negative 10, negative 20, negative 30. Here's negative 40. So for negative 38, it's going to be a little bit bigger than negative 40 or a little to the right of this. So that's going to be representing Darren's debt, right? Now for mine, we know it's going to be a debt of 52. So we're going to say the integer that represents that is going to be negative 52. But then for Darren, we think we're going to go ahead and say that is going to be an integer of negative 38. Remember, they both owe money, so they're in debt, which means these integers should be negative. All right, so using two different inequalities, we can either say one of two things. We can say uh, Mayan's account balance here is going to be less than Darren. So negative 52 is less than negative 38, right? He has less money, or if he owes more, he has less money technically. Or we can also say that uh, Darren's account of negative $38 is technically greater than mine's of negative 52. Now going ahead and explaining these inequalities, we can say, on one end, we can say that Darren is gonna be in more debt because his account is more negative. And another perspective we can say is that Mayan is technically in less debt because his account is less negative. So on the left side here, we're saying Darren is in more debt because negative 52 is more negative. Negative 38 is less negative. In the other hand, we can say that this negative 38 is greater than this negative 52 because negative 30 is less negative, which is technically more money or less debt, more money. So for the inequality to the left, we're saying that negative 52 is less than negative 38. So that negative 52 is more debt. And then on the right side, we're saying here that negative 38 is greater than negative 52. So negative 30 is less debt. So negative 38 is greater than negative 52. Let's check out a few more here. 
For 29, it says in math, a letter such as X can be assigned to uh, represent a variable and that's gonna represent some unknown value. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and give an example of a value for X. So we're gonna make up a number for X that lets us know that when we have this negative X or the opposite of X, that it's gonna give us a positive integer. And we're gonna go ahead and see if we can justify that. Now, you don't have to choose this exact number, but I'm going to go ahead and choose a negative number. I'm going to say x is equal to negative 3, okay? Uh, why am I choosing a negative 3? Well, notice what they're telling us here in the problem. They're saying that we need to find out when negative x is going to be a positive integer. So I'm saying that I want x to equal negative 3 here. So let's see if that works. So uh, we have a negative, and then we chose x to be negative 3. So it's a negative, negative 3. So uh, this is saying what's the opposite of the opposite of three, and this would be equal to positive three, right? Because if we have a normal three, then we take a negative and put it in front, that means the opposite of it. And we put another negative, that's the opposite of the opposite of three, and that would be equal to three. As long as you choose any negative number, this is going to work. We're basically saying the opposite of any opposite number or the opposite of any negative is going to be a positive. So essentially we can say that x has to always be negative in this scenario because the opposite of a negative is always going to be positive. All right, what about for number 30? Uh, this one's gonna be similar, but a little different. It says in math, a letter such as y can be assigned as a variable to represent some unknown values. So we're gonna use y instead of x. We're gonna go ahead and give an example of a value for y that results in negative y being a negative number and then explain. So we're gonna go ahead and define y and then say what we think y is gonna be. I think for y here, if we need this to be a negative number, well, let's see here, it says negative y is the expression and we need this to be a negative integer. So let's see, if we I'll go ahead and choose a positive number like five. So we have this expression of negative y and we're saying y can be five here. Let's see if that works. So we have this negative and then we're choosing y to be five. So when we do that, we put in parentheses just like this. And what's this equal to? This is just saying the opposite of five, and that's going to be negative five. Okay, so for this to work, we are just choosing a positive number. If you happen to choose a negative number, then it would be a negative negative, and then that would be positive. Basically, any positive number would work here. So you didn't have to choose y equals five, you could have chosen y equals any positive number, and it would work. So basically, y in this case has to be positive, because the opposite of a positive would always be negative, which is what we were looking for. Here is 31. In 31, it says in math, a letter such as W can be assigned as a variable to represent an unknown value. We're gonna go ahead and give an example of a value for W that results in a negative negative W having to be a negative integer. We're gonna go ahead and explain that. So, so in this problem, we have a negative negative W and that has to somehow equal a negative integer. So we gotta figure out what value for W will make this true. Um, so let's go ahead and see if we go ahead and define this. So let's see what we want w to equal. Now we have the opposite of the opposite of w. So um, if w happens to be a positive number, then the opposite of the opposite of a positive will always be positive. Um, so we don't maybe want to make w equal a positive number, especially if we want a negative one. So let's go with a negative integer here. So let's choose something like negative uh, seven. Let's see if this is going to work. So let's go ahead and plug in uh, negative seven in for w. So that would be a negative, negative, and then a negative seven, right? So again, the original expression here had two negatives in it. So these are the two original ones. We're choosing W to be negative seven. So that's why there's three negatives here. So let's see if we can go ahead and wrap our heads around this. There's a lot of negatives here. So we had a seven, we put a negative in front. That's the opposite of seven or negative seven. The opposite of that becomes a positive seven and the opposite of that flips it back to a negative seven. So if you have three negatives in front of a seven, that's really just the same thing as a negative seven. Now, did you have to choose negative seven? Absolutely not. You could have chosen any negative number. As long as you had those three negatives in a row, then the answer would be negative, which is what we were looking for. You just didn't want to choose a positive number. We can go ahead and say that w must be a negative number, like negative seven, because we had this opposite of opposite, right? We had two negatives, so that means the opposite of the opposite of whatever value, we said negative seven. So if we take the opposite of the opposite of this negative number, uh, that's always gonna end up being a negative number. All right, here's one final one here. In 32, it says, in math, a letter such as v can be assigned as a variable to represent an unknown value. Give an example of a value for v that results in the opposite of the opposite of v or negative negative v. 
that has to equal a positive integer and explain here. So let's go ahead and see. So in this case, it's actually very similar to the last example. So if we're using a little bit of logic here, I'm gonna go ahead and choose a positive number here like nine. And let's see if that makes sense here. So we have this expression of a negative negative V and this has to equal a positive integer, right? Now let's see, if we do this, it would be a negative negative and then we're choosing basically V to equal nine, right? So when we substitute in, we put parentheses around that. So we have a nine. If we put a negative in front, that's the opposite of nine or negative nine. And then we have a negative negative nine, right? The opposite of the opposite of nine or negative negative nine would just equal nine. Essentially here, any positive number is going to work because as you saw in number 31, if you use a negative number, then the answer would be a negative number. But in this case, we're looking for a positive number. So any positive number is going to work. So to justify this or explain it a little bit further, we can basically just say that V in this case has to be a positive just because if you go ahead and take the opposite of the opposite of a positive, that's always going to be positive. So we made this V a positive nine, but the opposite of the opposite of nine just equals a nine. So V in this case had to be positive. So there you have 32 different practice problems dealing with some opposites and integers in particular. Hopefully you got the hang of a little bit more about how negatives work. They really just mean you're taking the opposite of something. So every time you see more negatives, you can just also read them as opposite as well. Now, if you found the video helpful, please consider sharing with a classmate or friend who might also find it helpful. And as always, keep up the great work that you're already doing, and I'll see you in the next one.